Hey you folks, this is Jay Watson. I'm going to, going to show you how to create a simple JavaScript calculator. Uh, this is bare minimum code yet uh, completely functional and hopefully will help you just become more familiar with how JavaScript works, uh, reaching into form fields and using that information, doing things with that information. And to get started, all you will need for this tutorial is one file. Uh, go ahead and create calculator.html. I already have uh, the skeleton HTML uh, filled out. And it's saved on my desktop here. Uh, go ahead and get that set up. And I will go ahead and click on this. And of course, right now we don't have anything. Uh, just a blank web page with the title, My First Calculator. And I need to charge my MacBook down to 35%. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we want to do uh, within our body tags is let's just go and create a uh, div to hold our calculator. And we want to give it an ID of calc container uh, or calc contain. I'll just do that, yeah. And we'll close that. And now, of course, we will need a field. Or a field, a form, and in a field, and we will give our form name of calculator be descriptive, and then inside our form, uh, we, we're going to create the top box uh, where all the calculations in our calculator will be performed, and so we will create a plain text field, and of course we just use the input type equal text and then we'll give it a name of answer or answer box um, and I will close this field so here we go and I'll we'll save this and let's open up the browser and this is what we have so far just a blank field and so below this this is where it starts to happen we're going to go and put a break tag and below that, I want us to actually put an input field type equal button. And then we want to give it a value of one. But let's go ahead and space one out. So space one and one, and then put a space on either side of one. And that will just help our formatting look better. Of course, here in just a bit, we're going to use some CSS to make it look nicer anyway. So we'll go ahead and space, and we'll actually use the onclick event handler and then we're going to say onclick equal double quotes and then we'll specify that we want to actually reach inside of the calculator form of course right calculator dot answer and of course this is reaching inside our text field and when the user clicks on this button it's going to actually insert whatever they clicked inside this form field. So calculator.answer and then we want to specify dot value. So change the value or um, actually add to the value and we're going to say plus equal because we want to add to the value. We don't just want to change to it. And then single quotes one. Okay, plus equal one. And then our double quote is already closed out there. So make make sure that is correct. So um, calculator, this is reaching, and this is the core of how this works. And once you have this, uh, that this is pretty much what you need to know. So we're going to reach inside the, the form by name calculator, uh, the answer uh, input type box, uh, and then change the value or add to the value. So when the user clicks this button, we're going to add one uh, to that form field. And... Uh, we'll go ahead and save this, and let's go to Google Chrome. What do we have there? And when we click on this, it adds one. And this is exactly what we wanted to happen here. So, yeah, you can keep adding one, which that doesn't matter right now. So now instead of, uh, if you want to type that out a couple times, it probably wouldn't hurt just to help you uh, kind of recognize how that dot notation syntax. Uh, so... We're actually, uh, you can see how it's kind of a uh, cascading, or I guess you can see the hierarchy in the sense that we're reaching inside the calculator form, 
or the form of the name calculator and then choosing where we want to go from there and then we say hey we want to actually change the value but for me I'm going to do it the easy way I'm going to save this or copy that and paste 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 okay so we have four fields there of course we're going to need to change that and I'm going to want four buttons just like with a regular simple calculator and then I'm going to put a break tag and then what I want to do is I'm going to copy this and we're going to do uh, there we go and one more time and try to keep it organized like I have it make sure your code is tabbed out beautiful um, it really helps and I've inserted a space there just to show where the line breaks are and it keeps it real clean easy to read so now we actually need to uh, we have the syntax all of this is set so we actually need to change the buttons now and so I'm gonna say I want this to be a 2 and then I want this to be a 2 3 I want this to be a 3 uh, and so then I'm going to uh, I want this to actually be a, a plus symbol and of course I want this to be a plus symbol that's how JavaScript does math and so then the next number would be 4 5 well, five, six, and um, now of course uh, we'll actually put the subtraction the minus symbol and then we'll make sure this matches up 4 5 6 subtraction and let's see here okay now seven eight and you're like this is so simple it is indeed it is indeed and then we'll use uh, a lowercase x or you can use the asterisk uh, either way star symbol uh, of course over here we're going to make this match eight nine now if we use the x here because this is what javascript is actually doing the math with so the way this works, remember when we click the button, it inserted something into this field, okay? So what we need to do then is, uh, if JavaScript's going to do math, we need to use the actual star symbol, asterisk symbol, and so we're set there. Uh, so I'm gonna save this, and we're gonna go back to Chrome, refresh, and you can see we have the beginnings of a calculator here. Uh, very simple, very, uh, nasty looking calculator we're gonna change that here in a minute uh, so now we want to give the user the ability to clear it and we want to give the user the ability to use zero <laughs> that's important as well as uh, uh, actually add everything together we have to have the equal sign and I'll show you there'll be something different that we use here okay so we need the equal sign and then we need to give the user the ability to do division uh, so we're gonna reach uh, and change this one instead of actually clear uh, here or actually having anything here I'm just going to leave the uh, single quotes there and then I'm going to take this plus off so instead of saying hey we want to add to the value of this we're saying we want it to be made empty and so in this case we're just completely changing the value we're assigning it a new value of nothing and so someone can click the clear button the C button and it will clear the form field uh, and of course for zero that's pretty straightforward and then for the bottom one you can just use the forward slash for division and of course that's the symbol that JavaScript or that's a symbol that our computer would use to perform math if we wanted to divide one number by another number now this is where it's actually a little different uh, so what we want to do is actually um, uh, on click we're gonna say okay calculator dot answer dot value is equal okay so we're not wanting to add to a value we're wanting to actually populate this field okay with the answer okay so we're gonna say it is equal to of course make sure you get your you've deleted both your single quotes uh, we have a double quote here and a double quote or a double quote here I'm sorry and a double quote here 
So we're going to set it equal, and we're going to use this handy dandy function that JavaScript has built in. It makes it so easy for us the eval function. And it, uh, you know, it will essentially perform um, a math. It will evaluate whatever expression that we have typed into this input box. So it's going to reach inside and say, okay, what's here in that form field? And then it'll actually use this function to give us the answer which is pretty awesome if you ask me. Calculator, okay, that's the name of our form, dot answer, dot value. And so it's going to answer, um, it's going to perform evaluation and populate the field with the answer. And so let's save this, and let's actually go back to Google Chrome here, refresh, and let's see if we can do a little math here. Two plus two, is equal to four. Yay, hit the clear button. Is it working? Eight plus eight minus four should be 12 is 12. And of course, we have a working calculator here, but it looks gross. So that's where we want to do a little bit of CSS. And if you were like, I'm only here for the JavaScript, well, you're probably not a cool person. You probably have a case for your phone. If you do have a case for your phone, don't be offended. Just get rid of it. Um, I'm just trying to help you out. So, uh, what we need to do, and I'm getting ahead of myself here. Of course, we want to uh, style this, and we gave it an ID of calc contain. So, use the pound sign, calc contain. If you know any CSS, this is how we're. Um, this is how we connect to an ID. This is our selector. Uh, we can then specify the property and values. I always like to give a positioning scheme. Uh, most of the time we'll end up using this relative positioning scheme. It allows our websites to be more dynamic. Of course, sometimes we don't, but by and large, uh, that's what we use most of the time. Let's go ahead and give it a width of 300 pixels just because that's a cool movie. Actually, I guess it's okay. This, the graphics were a bit overdone. Not as good as Gladiator. No way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Be mad. Be mad if you want. Um, so we gave it a border. Two picks. Solid black. Uh, and we also want to give it a border radius. And that just curves the corners to make it look a bit uh, prettier. And so go ahead. Uh, four picks. Be sleek. Don't do too much. And then bam. We have this not so beautiful looking calculator box. Uh, but that's going to change. Go back to subline. Let's style our input um, our input boxes and our um, the input fields. Uh, so first we have the button and, and the way you style anything with input is you need to first type the word input that's, that connects you to the HTML element and then you actually use square brackets okay and if we want to actually style or then we need to specify the type uh, so we have two types, and I'm going to say type equal, and of course, button, right? Yeah, that's what you were going to say. And then curly braces, so where we can list our style rules for the input type of button. And first thing, I want to give it a background color, and I'm going to say light gray, just because I like that color, which probably means I'm boring. I'm sorry. Width, 20%, and uh, yeah, I had to do a little math here. Not really that much math. I'm going to increase the font size. And the reason I give it a width 20% is uh, by the time we add our margin, uh, these will look pretty much centered. You'll see here in a second. Uh, so font size, what's a good font size? 20 pixels. And font weight, 900. Yeah, I could have typed bold. But that's not what the cool kids do. Margin. 2% or I'm sorry yeah 2% is what I wanted to do yeah 2% and then let's go ahead and give it a border radius and what I would encourage you to do when you're learning CSS is stop refresh stop refresh or save and then refresh save and then refresh and that way you see what every bit of code does and it's just so much nicer and we'll use the same Border radius, let's uh, do this. And there we go, look at there, look at these beautiful buttons here. Two plus two, 
still equals four all day long. Uh, one more thing we have to style. Hopefully you can do that by yourself. Why don't you see if you can, if you can style this by yourself, pause the video. Uh, if not, if you like just show me, then don't pause the video because I'm not pausing. Type equals submit, right? And then that's our selector. And then we have our properties and our values. And I'm going to give it a position of relative. I'm going to tell this bit of code to display as block. So we're going to handle it as a block level element. And we'll give it a width of 90 percent I'm just going to do this fast and I'm going to say margin uh, five pixels maybe five pixels auto and then font size and I'll use the same font size 20 pixels and let's we'll save this get back to Chrome refresh and did I not save it input type now that was very anticlimactic Relative display block margin five picks auto. Oh, oh wow, oh wow. I hope you saw my error before I saw it. It's been a long day, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. So, I don't even really know why I did that. I really don't. So, two plus two plus two equals six. And we have a very basic calculator, and hopefully you learned something from that tutorial. Um, you need probably to benefit from this tutorial. You needed to have at least a basic understanding of JavaScript, and, and maybe just a basic understanding of the document object model, and how you're actually able to reach inside the document using IDs and names, and then grab specific uh, elements of the web page, which is what we did. Uh, we were able to use JavaScript, use the document object model to reach in to this particular form because it had the form name of calculator and then reach into this particular uh, field uh, with the name of answer and that's pretty much all we used and we used it over and over again and we inserted values into that field and then we used JavaScript's built-in eval function to actually solve, um, solve the uh, expression. And so this was super easy, but understanding this will allow you to take off and do all sorts of cool, awesome, great things like kayaking off a waterfall.